Congregation will please stand. <clears throat> Dear friends in Christ, on this most holy night in which our Lord Jesus passed over from death to life, the church invites her members dispersed throughout the world to gather in vigil and prayer. For this is the Passover of the Lord, in which by hearing his word and celebrating his sacraments, we share in his victory over death. Let us pray. O oh God, through your Son, you have bestowed upon your people the brightness of your light. Sanctify this new fire and grant that in this Paschal feast, we may so burn with heavenly desires that with pure minds, we may attain to the festival of everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Rejoice now, heavenly hosts and choirs of angels, and let your trumpet shout salvation. For the victory of our mighty King. Rejoice and sing now all the round earth. Bright with a glorious splendor. For darkness has been vanquished by our eternal King. Rejoice and be glad now, Mother Church, and let your holy courts in radiant light Resound with the praises of your people. All you who stand near this marvelous and holy flame, pray with me to God the Almighty for the grace to sing the worthy praise of this great light. Through Jesus Christ, his Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with him in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly right and good always and everywhere 
with our whole heart and mind and voice to praise you. The invisible, almighty, and eternal God, and your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who at the feast of the Passover paid for us the debt of Adam's sin, and by his blood delivered your faithful people. This is the night when you brought our fathers, the children of Israel, out of bondage into Egypt and led them through the Red Sea on dry land. This is the night when all who believe in Christ are delivered from the gloom of sin and are restored to grace and holiness of life. This is the night when Christ broke the bonds of death and hell and rose victorious from the grave. Ah, how wonderful and beyond our knowing, O oh God, is your mercy and loving kindness to us, that to redeem a slave you gave a son. Ah, how holy is this night, when wickedness is put to flight, and sin is washed away. It restores innocence to the fallen and joy to those who mourn. It casts out pride and hatred and brings peace and concord. How blessed is this night when earth and heaven are joined and man is reconciled to God. Holy Father, accept our evening sacrifice, the offering of this candle in your honor. May it shine continually to drive away all darkness. May Christ, the morning star who knows no hope setting, find it ever burning. He who gives his light to all creation and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. My wife, Manny, once told me that you can't believe everything you're reading in your service leaflets. It tells you to extinguish your flames. Don't do that, you will need that. Let us hear the record of God's saving deeds in history, how he saved his people in ages past. And let us pray that our God will bring each of us to the fullness of redemption. Our first story this evening, please be seated, <clears throat> is the very familiar story of creation. Found the Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. 
God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky. And there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together, he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And then let them be for signs for the seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the great light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the earth of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image, in the image of God that created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth and every tree with seed and its fruit, you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that is beneath is, has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. 
Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it, God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us all say together, Psalm number 36, found in your service leaflets, and this is why you need your lights. We will say this in unison. Your love, O Lord, reaches to the heavens, and your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the strong mountains, your justice like the great deep. You have saved both man and beast, O Lord. How priceless is your love, O God. Your people take refuge under the shadow of your wings. They feast upon the abundance of your house. You give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the well of life, and in your light we see light. Continue your loving kindness to those who know you, and your favor to, to those, those who are true heart. heart. Let us pray. O God, who wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature, grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity. Your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A reading from Exodus of Israel's deliverance at the Red Sea. As Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked back and there were the Egyptians advancing on them. In great fear, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you've taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done for us, bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not the very thing that we told you in Egypt? Let us alone and let us serve the Egyptians? For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. But Moses said to the people, do not be afraid, stand firm, and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians who you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to keep still. Then the Lord said to Moses, why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. But you lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it that the Israelites may go into the sea on dry ground. Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And so I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and his chariot drivers. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gained glory for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots and his chariot drivers." The angel of God, who was going before the Israelite army, moved and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the, the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched his hand out over the sea. And the Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. 
At the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, let us flee from the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched his, out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea had returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. Then the prophet Miriam, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand, and with all the women went out after her with tambourines and with dancing. And Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our next psalm is the song of Moses, Canticle 8, which we will read responsively by half verse. Canticle 8. I will sing to the Lord, for he is lofty and uplifted. The horse and its rider has he hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my refuge. The Lord has become my Savior. This is my God, and I will praise him. The God of my people, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a mighty warrior. Yahweh is his name. The chariots of Pharaoh and his army he has hurled into the sea. The finest of those who bear armor have been, have been drowned, drowned in, in the, the Red, Red sea. sea. The fathomless deep has overwhelmed them. They, they sank, sank into, into the depths, depths like, like a stone. stone. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in might. Your, Your right hand, hand, O Lord, has overthrown, overthrown the enemy. Who can be compared with you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is, Who is like, like you, glorious, glorious in holiness, holiness awesome, awesome in renown, and, renown, and worker of wonders? You stretched forth your right hand. The, the earth, earth swallowed them up. With your constant love, you led the people you redeemed. With, With your, your might, you brought, brought them in safety to your holy dwelling. dwelling. You will bring them in and plant them on the, on the mount, mount of your, of your possession. possession. The resting place you have made for yourself, O Lord. The sanctuary, sanctuary O Lord, Lord, that your hand has established. established. The Lord shall reign. Forever, forever and, and ever. Forever. Let us pray. O God, whose wonderful deeds of old shine forth even to our own day. You once delivered by the power of your mighty arm, your chosen people from slavery under Pharaoh, to be a sign for us of the salvation of all nations by the water of baptism. Grant that all the peoples of the earth may be numbered among the offspring of Abraham and rejoice in the inheritance of Israel. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our next reading is from the book of Ezekiel, the story of the Valley of the Dry Bones. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. 
Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them. The flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that thy may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are for the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, I'm going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves. O my people, I will put my spirit within you and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us say together Psalm 30. I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have lifted me up and have not left my enemies triumph over me. O Lord, my God, I cried out to you, and you restored me to health. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. You restored my life as I was going down to the grave. Sing, Sing to, to the Lord, Lord you servants, servants of, his. of his. Give, Give thanks, thanks for the remembrance, the remembrance of his holiness. His holiness. For, for his, his wrath, wrath endures, endures but, the but the twinkling of an eye. His, his favor, favor for a lifetime. lifetime. Weeping may spend the night, but joy comes in the morning. morning. While I felt secure, I said, I shall never be disturbed. disturbed. You, Lord, with, with your favor, favor made me as strong as the mountains. Then you then hid your face, face and I was filled, filled with fear. I cried to you, O Lord. Lord. I pleaded with the Lord, saying, How profit is there in my blood if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you or declare your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. O Lord, Lord, be my, my helper. helper. You, you have, have turned my wailing into dancing. dancing. You, you have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. Therefore, my heart sings to you without ceasing. O Lord, my God, I will I'll give, give you, you thanks forever. forever. Let us pray. Almighty God, by the Passover of your Son, you have brought us out of sin into righteousness and out of death into life. Grant to those who are sealed by your Holy Spirit the will and power to proclaim you to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The final reading for tonight is the gathering of God's people, found 
in the book of Zephaniah. Sing aloud, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more. On that day, it will be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exalt over you and loud, with loud singing as on the day of festival. I will remove disaster from you so that you will not hear reproach for it. I will deal with all your oppressors at that time. And I will save the lame and gather the outcast, and I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time, I will bring you home, at the time when I gather you, for I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth, when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll read Psalm 98 responsively by half verse. Sing to the Lord a new song. With his right hand and his holy arm. The Lord has made known his victory. He remembers his mercy and faithfulness to the house of Israel. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. Sing to the Lord with the harp, with trumpets and the tra sound of the horn. Let the sea make a noise and all that is in it. Let the rivers clap their hands. In righteousness shall he judge the world. Let us pray. O God of unchangeable power and eternal life, look favorably on your whole church, that wonderful and sacred mystery. By the effectual working of your providence, carry out in tranquility the plan of salvation. Let the whole world see and know that things which were cast down are being raised up, and things which had grown old are being made new and that all things are being brought to their perfection by him through whom all things were made. Your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Congregation will please stand for the renewal of baptism. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. 
He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? With God's help. Will you per persevere in resisting evil? And whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek to serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Congregation will please stand for the entrance hymn.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God of unchangeable power and eternal light, look favorably on your whole church, that wonderful and sacred mystery. By the effectual working of your providence, carry out in tranquility the plan of salvation. Let the whole world see and know that things which were cast down are being raised up, and things which had grown old are being made new, and that all things are being brought to their perfection by him through whom all things were made, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. <clears throat> A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, Lord Christ. Christ. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, 
they saw that the stone was very large and it had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is a place that they laid him, but go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Jen, what happened? That, that's un, un, that makes me feel uncomfortable. That's uneasy. Did it break? <laughs> oh, that's unfinished. That's an unfinished chord that just lets you hang. I know we're not supposed to sing, but I don't know about you, but behind your mask, you probably wanted to go ahead and finish that, that alleluia. Father, we come to you tonight thanking you for what is unfinished, what needs to be accomplished, what needs to be resolved. We praise you most for your resurrection in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If you think it was easy getting Jen to do that, you're wrong. <laughs> I think she practiced more on that than uh, anything else I've ever heard her play, and she did not like it. I asked her to do it because Jen has now taken a page out of Mark's gospel. For you see, it's how he finished or how the book was finished. It just seems wrong. Mary Magdalene, Mary, and the mother of James and Salome who followed Jesus in Galilee. They started in Galilee. They followed him to the cross. They followed as his body was taken from the cross and eventually laid in the tomb and the tomb sealed. They were there, most of them, from the beginning. It seems that when they arrived, they looked around and saw a man in white sitting on the right. And it startled them. They went in. And he began to try and comfort them, to keep them from being afraid. But Jesus was not where they had left him. He was gone. He tells them he's alive, he's risen, he's gone. And then tells them what Jesus wanted him to say. To go and tell the disciples and Peter to meet me in Galilee. So really, there was a very simple message. Don't be afraid and go and tell. That was it. They leave. And the last verse of, uh, that I read tonight, verse 8, Mark says, they said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Two things they were asked to do, not to be afraid and to go tell. They were afraid and they said nothing. Sort of like that alleluia that Jen let hang there. It just doesn't seem right. How could Mark be ended that way? Unresolved. Left us wanting more. 
Now we know at some point as they walked away that fear subsided enough that they did tell the disciples and they did tell Peter. And the disciples listened. And at some point, the disciples gather themselves together and go to Galilee as Jesus asked them to do. When they arrive, Peter sort of takes over it. In John 21, it says this. They all get out of the van, and they're standing there, and Peter looks at them and says, I'm going fishing. I need to fish. I don't know what he was expecting, but the other ten said, we're going with you. And they get in a boat, and they go out, and we know what happened. They fished all night. They caught nothing. As the sun begins to come up, a man standing on the beach yells out to them, how's it going? And they yell back, not so good. Why don't you put the net down on the right side? And they do. And I love this about John. He always, he always has to sort of just, just irritate just a little bit when he talks to the other disciples. Because in John it says again, the disciple that Jesus loved says to Peter. He doesn't say, I said to Peter. He doesn't say, John says to Peter. It's always that disciple that Jesus loved. Says to Peter. Hey, Peter, does this look familiar to you? Does it sound familiar to you? The whole thing about switching sides with the boat? Peter looks up and sees the man on the beach. And what does he do? He jumps in, swims to shore, while the other 10 are left to drag the net and to row the boat. I picture Peter coming out of that water and running up to Jesus, not knowing what the reception might be. But to run up, most likely in tears. And I picture Jesus embracing him and hugging him. And as the other disciples come, they gather around that breakfast that Jesus is cooking for them and begin to talk. And one of the things those disciples find out right away is that Jesus has forgiven all of them for failing, for running, for Peter denying him. I don't believe that Mark ended that gospel the way he did by accident. It appears to me he accomplished exactly what he wanted to accomplish. And that is to tell you that Jesus Christ is risen. That is to tell you the message to go back to Galilee. Why? And that's all he wanted to accomplish. They went back to Galilee for one purpose. It's where it all began. It's where they were called. It's where Jesus called them from their professions to give things up and follow him and become fishers of mankind. And he brings them back again. And he brings them back to start over. He brings them back so Peter can be renewed. All of them be forgiven. All of them strengthened. All of them renewed. So that they will be able to be sent out for the rest of of their lives to preach the gospel of a risen Christ. Folks, I believe we are all called back to our Galilee. That wherever we were with an encounter with God, when he laid claim on our lives, that we are called back to that spot when we need it. And we all need it. Some of you know this, but my first Sunday here 
years ago, sitting about where Jack is sitting tonight, that when I came in this place, I didn't even know why I was trying to go back to church. And when we got to the confession, and I fell to my knees, and I listened to all of you, and I joined you in confessing my sin. That is my Galilee. This place is my Galilee. I come back to this place not just to see you, which is wonderful, but also to be renewed and strengthened by your presence and by the presence of the Holy Spirit and Christ himself. We all need to go back to our Galilee. We all need to be renewed by God. One of my favorite teachers is Father Michael Marsh. Maybe some of you have read him. He tells this story. Several years ago, a woman told me that her great-grandson asked her why she had so many wrinkles on her hand. I'm old, she told him. He went on. Do you know what happens when you get old? He asked. You die, and they bury you in the ground. Well, before she could say anything, he kept going. But that's okay, grandmother. That's okay. God comes and unburies you. God comes and unburies you. It's that simple. We have been called by God, but we begin to get buried by the sin in our lives. By the, the dirt that gets into our minds, our hearts, our tongue, our feet. And we come back just as we did on Thursday night to wash feet. Not because our whole bodies needed to be washed, but to be cleansed our feet where the dirt, where the sin is. And God calls us back to Galilee to need uh, to take care of the need that we have, to be cleansed where we need to be cleansed, to be renewed and strengthened and sent out. I believe one of the most important reasons we come to church is to come back and be with each other, confess our sins, and be renewed and set out again to go into a world that gets us dirty. My friends, that's our Easter, to be renewed, to be cleansed, to be set out. Happy Easter. Please stand. The peace of the risen Christ be with you always. And now let us exchange a sign of Christ's peace while maintaining our social distance. The peace of the Lord be with you. Peace be with you. Peace. Peace. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Please be seated.
Our liturgy continues with Eucharistic Prayer D, which is printed in your book.
My friends, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks for you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever, fountain of life and source of all goodness. You made all things and fill them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day, and beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We acclaim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners, freedom, to the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand awaiting his coming in glory and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup 
may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ, to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and per preserve it in peace. Remember Michael, our presiding bishop, William, our bishop, all who minister in your church. Remember all your people and those who seek your truth. Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ and those whose faith is known to you alone. Bring them into the place of eternal joy and life. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Joseph, her spouse, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, the apostles and martyrs, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. My friends, the gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. Please be seated. body of Christ and the bread of heaven, the blood of Christ and the cup of salvation.
stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord, amen. May almighty God who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. May God, who brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to the, your eternal inheritance. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Processional hymn.
Go in peace to love and serve the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia.